Hello and welcome. In today's guide, I'm going to show you guys how to rename uh, one of these popular uh, Bluetooth 4.0 uh, audio modules. Um, in this case, uh, it's uh, the module that does not have an amplifier, but you might as well have the one with the amplifier. The um, the blue board here, which is the, the actual Bluetooth module, should be the same and should be programmable in exactly the same way. Although the pinouts, uh, the pinouts might uh, might vary a little bit on your board. I um, I will link in all the uh, I'll I'll link in a uh, a pinout of this uh, the CSR eight six four five uh, daughter board not daughter board but like yeah the one that's piggybacking onto the green board and um, obviously I'll uh, demo everything on on the example of this board. Uh, this is one of those uh, those ones that accept uh, 12 volts in, and yeah. So uh, we're going to be doing the programming uh, with uh, this programmer. I bought this on eBay for about, um, if not exactly, 20 euros. So including shipping, I believe. And I will obviously link in uh, everything in the description. Um, just so you know what you're looking for, mine looks like this on the inside in case there's different ones right so it has this this board from CSR in the middle almost the middle and uh, yeah so let's put this back together and head on over to the computer and uh, here we'll install the software and uh, yeah so to do this you'll have to go to uh, the CSR support website so it's csrsupport.com slash PCSW, so PC software. And you will have to make an account and uh, they will bitch about uh, you not having a, uh, a cool enough uh, email address. So they have, a, they have a system whereby if you have a Gmail account or a Yahoo account, it'll say that I and I are not a big company. So yeah, you, you'll not be allowed to, to do anything, but actually it does work. It does take quite a while to get the email, and with the email you will get the password. So that's how this works. It's a bit, bit weird, but anyway. So you go to this, uh, this link once you have, the, once you have the, the password, and I might probably also, uh, also link it in the description, the software, although I'm not sure. Yet to be decided. Um, and so yeah, just download the software. And I'm going to go uh, step by step with you guys and actually download it and install it. So uh, it is fairly new, so that's what I'm noticing at the moment. Uh, I do have. So how do you actually download it? Holy crap! So I did download it, deleted it, so I can uh, show you guys how to actually do it. And I am crap. It is 11:28, so I am. Uh, my mental capacities are uh, decreasing visibly. Alright, so this shouldn't be too large of a download and they do have pretty okay servers, so... We'll head on over to that now. And you will have it over here. Oh yeah, this is the actual recording. And, um, yeah. So install this right quick, and this should all go very fast and very smoothly. It doesn't actually require too much setup, so yeah, it's fine. Probably don't need this and other stuff, but yeah, it should be fine. And this needs to be checked, so if by any chance it's not checked, then yeah, do check it. And uh, yeah, so this is going along quite smoothly. And yeah, so what you want to do now is go back and go into program CSR. So it's a super mega industrial program, so it doesn't create no shortcuts or anything. So yeah, and you will have this. This is a different tool, which we will not be discussing in this video because it doesn't actually work. So this bricks the uh, bricks the, the board every time. So I don't know. I am actually going to delete this on the spot. All right. So go into uh, Blue Suit, and what you want to be going for is PS Tool. 
I think it runs without administrative uh, rights, but yeah, what the hell. All right, so now that we're at this stage, we uh, have to connect the board up. And this is going to be by far the most tricky part, the, the trickiest part of, of this entire process. Although not too difficult, it is quite finicky. And so yeah, let's get back to the uh, table shot. And uh, yeah, so basically uh, to facilitate your viewing experience, I uh, have made a nice little schematic here. And so basically this is what we're looking at. Actually, I could have brought that up on the computer, but yeah, this is more old school. So anyway, we want to go, uh, the pins on this are, are, are numbered that away. So 40 is over here. I believe it's 40 in total. I'm not sure. And so on these modules that have the 12 volt uh, um, uh, DC to DC converter, you will have this, uh, this uh, breakout over here. And um, yeah, so we will be using uh, master in slave out, CSB clock master out slave in for the SPI. So these are the four pins that actually do the communication. And um, SPI enable will actually connect to plus via a 10K resistor. So between SPI and, uh, and uh, the plus connection. And V and G, we don't actually have to solder onto these super tiny, tiny pads. We can actually use battery and ground. I buzzed them out and, and they do come out over there. I also drew this very uh, professionally. Um, all right, so this is how it looks. And uh, don't get too frightened. The soldering is uh, not the best, but yeah, I did cobble this up right quick because I couldn't couldn't wait to see if it works or not. So yeah, basically you have to connect all the pins on those little pads and the best way to do is start from one side and then go to the other and then fan, fan out. And the 10K resistor just uh, flapping around in the breeze. You could buy one of those pogo pins kind of kind of things, but I don't know. They were insanely expensive and I'm pretty sure they don't fit this particular board, so. And theoretically you only program it once and then you're done, so yeah. Uh, there's also, on, on this, there's actually a bit more pins, a few more pins. Uh, there's um, VS, which actually stands for Voltage Select. And for my future self, I did actually write it on the wire. And so basically, if you connect that to uh, ground, it makes the SPI communications uh, run on 3 volts instead of 1.8. But it does work on 1.8, and I wouldn't dare try it with 3.3. Uh, There's no reason. It works just fine like this. So leave that untouched. And um, yeah, I believe that is all. So basically, we won't be using the 1V8 pin and the VS pins. And there's a lot of grounds, they are all connected and they are all the same ground. So I just took a wire out of one of them. So this is the connector I made by uh, super gluing a bit of uh, a few jumper links. And so this would be the point where if I put this in the wrong way, it will be disastrous. So yeah, this looks fine. And it's fine like this. All right. So I'll push this in. It is connected to the board. And I'll stick this one out. So I did actually order two of these because I was pretty sure I was going to burn one of them. And it's that easy that I didn't do it. So yeah. It is a pretty straightforward process. All right. So you power this up. It has two lights here. I'll try to somehow. How can I prop this up? Just give me a sec. Yeah, we should at some point see the um, the uh, the data li li uh, light flickering. All right, so um, click this if, uh, if nothing shows over here. So you should actually have a device here called uh, CSR USB SPI converter. So it's all very nicely done. 
and nicely named so you're gonna select the first option here SPI and select your device just click OK and that is pretty much it so this is basically a huge list of all the stuff you can configure for this uh, actually it might be more than what you can configure for this uh, for this uh, CSR8645 chip but yeah they they do have this uh, this setup over here so they did also notice that there's quite a few options so you can have a little search function narrow down say local and what we want to go for is this uh, user friendly name so let's uh, change it to YouTube tutorial alright and then um, before you do this and yeah I'm sorry I, I did forget to tell you guys this so something that is insanely important and cannot be forgotten is um, performing a dump so this basically uh, makes a file of all the settings that are saved um, so this basically the, the the chip basically has a config file a configuration file saved somewhere in flash and every time you boot it up it starts reading from that and configures itself according to that and that contains the name how the LEDs blink, how it's supposed to beep, what it's supposed to beep like, a lot of stuff. There's an insane amount of stuff, as you can have seen from the, from the huge list. And there's many ways in which you can screw this up, and I actually did screw it up. So one of the programs, the one I mentioned earlier, does screw stuff up. And I, I believe if you click reset BC, it also fucks it up. And so if you do fuck it up, then it's pretty bad if you don't have a backup. So I was pretty fortunate that I did have the second one and basically cloned the settings from this one, put them back on that one and it did work. I will include the, the settings I have, the, the, the file, the settings file in the description. So that should be fine. But in case you have a slight variation of this board, then it should be really be worthwhile to, to save it. Plus it's, it's very fast. So just click dump. And I already have a few dumps here. So let's say demo dump and it's a persistent store files file right so as you can see it is reading from the chip and that was pretty much all of it so we have the demo dump here and this is how it looks so it's basically a lot of stuff and actually the name is is uh, coded so so for example name you won't find or you will find it but not in clear text and so for example Darye is nowhere to be found and YouTube is nowhere to be found right so you need to use this uh, this uh, this bit of software to uh, to change stuff and so you've changed the name to whatever you want it what the fuck is this All right so you've changed it right let's say YouTube tutorial and then you click set and then the little light should blink again if it hasn't already let me do it again all right so it does do it pretty quickly and you will need to restart the the entire operation and now let's um, let's go in here and see if it has worked So as you can see, I have been using quite a quite a few of these modules, and it did start to piss me off an insane amount because uh, all of them are called like 8645, and on the on iOS devices you can't rename them, so it's a huge pain in the ass. I don't know why we're seeing two names here, so let me refresh that right quick. All right, so this isn't going to plan. What is this? Ah crap, this is my, uh, this is the other speaker in my room, so you probably heard it. And this is our module over here. So let me actually bring it into shot, try to bring both of them into shot. So as to prove the veridicity of this uh, operation. So forget device, and it should start blinking frantically looking for a host. Alright, so it's blinking, and then you click it, and it starts. Alright, very nice. So it has worked. 
and um, yeah, it should work pretty well for you guys as well. And uh, if you have any questions or difficulties, uh, don't hesitate to uh, hit me up in the in the comments. And yeah, good luck with your projects, and have a good one.